Today, I'm giving you a super simple hack which will help you to become su super frugal or at least more frugal than you are now. Hello and welcome. My name is Peter B and I welcome you here at My First Million where we are achieving our financial goals together. So, frugality. First, before kicking this really off, just make sure. If I'm talking about frugality, I don't mean exactly cheap, although they are somehow related, but people often mix them, mix them up. Cheap means you don't want to spend money on anything, not on yourself, not on other people. You don't want to help out other people. And yeah, in general, just uh, potentially um, value money too, too much. In contrast, frugality goes into the same direction, but it doesn't have the same definition. Let me change here to, to my whiteboard. So the fr definition of frugality is, frugality basically means it's the quality of being economical, both with your money or food. So this doesn't have to do anything with cheapness. It's just, or being cheap, it's just you are taking care on where is your money best spent on or what's the best usage of your money or also food in the definition. And I think we can take this a little bit more broad. If we already consider food, we can take, um, consider resources in general, being more frugal with re resources, um, be more economical with resources and money. So that's the definition of, of frugality. And Frugality helps everyone on his road um, on being financial, financially more successful. So as we clear this up um, with the definition here, what's actually the meaning of frugality, I want to jump over to my personal frugality mindset hack. So this is the, the hack that I personally use to be more frugal and to Think twice whether or not I want to spend money on them, something. Step number one, so just to get um, in order to get um, the basics from, from this mindset head, you need to consider the rule of 72. Rule of 72 means basically um, you, can, you can invest your money um, and with a certain rate of return, it will tell you how long it will, it will take you to, to double your money. So I have a separate video for rule of 72. Um, and I will put, put this video in, in, in the description of this video. So if, if you want to know more about rule of 72, check, check, the, uh, check out the descriptions. So, but basically what rule of 72 means, I personally, I expect a seven to 8% return on every investment that I'm taking. So considering this, I'm just taking 72 and divide it by, let's say 7.2%. This equals 10. So if I have a, a rate of return of around seven to 8%, on the expected rate of returns of seven to eight percent, I will be able to um, double my money every ten years. So this is basically the the result. Number two is basically the result of the rule of seventy two for my personal calculation. Of course, you can consider another rate of return if you think the seven to eight percent is too generous. It's difficult to achieve that. You can go more conservative then the dump, uh, maybe your money will double, um, the doubling of your money will take longer. Or if you think this is way too conservative and you, th you think you are able to um, do better than that, you can think about um, maybe your doubling will be much faster than 10 years. But I think, um, yeah, my 7.2% that I use for this calculation is both a little bit ambitious, but uh, still more leaning toward the com conservative side of things. So I think I can double my money every 10 years. 
So that's basically the, the one thing that I'm, I'm going to consider first. So now, what's the meaning of doubling my money every 10 years? So this basically means if I have $1 now, 10 years from now, the $1, if I consider the rule of 72, means I will reinvest every rate of return, every interest, every dividend I get from the investment. I will reinvest this again. So after 10 years, the $1 will become $2. After 20 years, the, the $2 doubles again to $4. So we have two time doubles in 20 years. First year will to two, second 10 years, it will go to four. Then the third 10 years, it will double again if everything will be reinvested and everything will be compounded. So the four will go to eight. Then after 40 years, the $1 will become 16. After 50 years, the $1 becomes 32 and so on. So after 70 years, you will be more than $100 and believe it or not, this is the magic of compounding interest. After 100 years, you will be able to, it, um, the time is working for us so well um, that $1 can become $1,000. So now the question is, of course, maybe you're already in the middle of your life. Maybe you don't have 100 years ahead of you anymore. So the question is, when will you need the money that you are currently spending? For me, I'm now 36 years old and I'm telling myself everything that I'm spending now, I could be saving this up and use it as a, as a safety cushion for the time when I'm 86 years old. Of course, I hope when I go into retirement, I have, I have um, saved up enough. But so every, every dollar that I can save now, can go into my, my retirement fund. And maybe this I can then withdraw when I'm 86 years old. So I give myself a 50 year period of how long the money can stay invested. So for me in this example, in 50 years, my $1 can become $32. And that's my, my rate that I will consider every dollar um, spend it, actually I'm spending the $32 that I need in my late retirement, in a higher retirement age. So consider for yourself how many years you still have, to, you, you still have time to double. Maybe it's only two, two doubles, maybe it's you're uh, maybe still 20 years old, maybe you have 70 years or 80 years even ahead um, of you. So Therefore, the, the, um, the multiplication figure will become different. But for me, it's the 32 years old, uh, the $32 that I will take into consideration. So keep the 32 in mind, but also think about your own personal situation, which is the reasonable amount that you can still achieve. So I'm getting 32 years, uh, $32. So now every time, when I'm somewhere and considering buying something, I will do a very quick calculation um, whether or not, in order to figure out whether or not I'm willing to buy something. So for it, I put here in some examples. So let's say a cup of coffee. Maybe the cup of coffee costs maybe $3. Then I will multiply this by 32. As you said, it can, the, each dollar can go up to 32 for, for my personal situation. So $3 times 32 means $96. So in my, and I think this is now the mindset trick that plays in. In my, doll, in my consideration here, I'm not just spending $3 for a cup of coffee. I am spending $60, $96, nearly $100 that I could have if I wouldn't, uh, that I could have in my retirement if I just 
give up the current pleasure of getting a cup of coffee. Then another example is maybe taking, a, taking the bus. So where I'm living, public transportation is super cheap. And I'm often commu commuting to longer distances with, with um, the metro, metro station. So I'm going to the metro station to commute. But I'm a little bit more than one kilometer, a, a little bit less than one mile away from, from the metro station. So I can consider to take the bus from my home to the metro station or I can consider to walk. So the bus will cost me around 60 cents. So less than a dollar, so it's super cheap. But still, I will take into consideration my factor of 32. So for me, the 62, uh, the 60 cents will come, will be around $20, of course, is a very rough calculation. So for me, then the calculation will be, should I take the bus, bus means am I willing to spend the $20 on the bus? And of course, often I need to wait for the bus. Um, then usually I'm pretty fast, I'm a pretty fast walker. And until the bus is here and also the bus is is arriving the, the metro station, I'm potentially already in the same time. I'm already arriving the metro station. So there's a big consideration whether I'm really willing to spend this $20. Also, walking, of course, is more healthy than taking just a bus. Um, then the next example, this could be maybe something a, a little bit more expensive. I just put in something more expensive here as an example. Let's say you want to buy a car for $30,000. This times 32 will become how much? You can see it here. Nearly 1 million US dollars in 50 years. So really consider also both in small amounts and in big amounts. What are you really willing to spend? Of course, maybe you need a car. So maybe you cannot save the $30,000, but maybe there are cheaper alternatives, or maybe there are other alternatives for, of, for mode of transportations. But just to see, for my uh, factor of 32, the 30,000 that I would be spending on a car now would become nearly $1 million by the eight in 50 years. So, and then maybe another thing is also when you go shopping and you will consider buying a, a bar of chocolate when you, when you go through the check, checkout counter. So maybe the bar of chocolate costs maybe $1.50. Then again, I will just simply make a calculation. One, $1.5 times 32 equals, I believe it's $48. So it's nearly $50 again. And so it's a good practice just to, to consider, do I really want to spend this $1.50 or in other terms, in my mindset, I will, I will consider, do I really want to spend $50 on this chocolate bar? Just to, um, um, just maybe because the bar is smiling at me and I get some pleasure to, to eat it, but it's not really healthy. There's another point and financially it doesn't really make sense, especially if I'm not hungry and don't have any needs to add some additional calories into my stomach. So that's how my mindset trick works. So every time when I'm trying to buy something or when I want to buy something, especially when, when it comes to like non necessities, when it comes to discre uh, discretionary expenses, considering your factor of how much this can grow through investments. So, and then the, inv then the amount that you are actually spending is much bigger than the current amount labeled on, on, as a price, as a price tag on the product. So that's how I'm able to live pretty frugal or sometimes even a little bit close to extremely frugal. 
So these are a few examples. Now, of course, frugality is not everything and you shouldn't um, uh, take this always into consideration. No matter, so the conclusion also, or one thing to keep in mind is also, no matter how frugal you are, always consider opportunity costs. For instance, if you're low on, on your sugar level, maybe you need a chocolate bar, then maybe the chocolate bar can help you out. Maybe you're, you're very in a hurry to go to office or go to work or arrive home. Then maybe if the bus is just coming, of course, maybe you should just take the bus and therefore arrive home or arrive to office on time. And also maybe sometimes there are like necessary expenses. Like your, if you have a car, if it doesn't run very smoothly anymore, maybe there's something that needs to be checked or repaired. Better to do it earlier than um, risking any safety issues, having any safety issues with, with your car. So this is uh, all things taking, need to be taken into consideration also as well. Not just the frugality mindset, but also um, the opportunity costs that you are giving up when you use the, the mindset hack for frugality. So to sum it up, um, what's your factor that you could be using for considering this mindset hack? Is this something that might be able to help you to live a little bit more frugal or to become more frugal or you think this doesn't work? And if it doesn't, if you think it doesn't work, why you think it, does, it doesn't work for you? Um, please write it in the comments below. I would be very happy and looking forward to reading through your comments. Thanks a lot for joining me today. I hope to see you again in the next video and especially I'm looking forward to see you winning financially.